Okay, here it is, the Congreve clock, set to local time. <laughs> there she goes, every 15 seconds. How accurate is that? I don't know. But uh, I'm going to take this clock's word for it. Let's get some light on the front. There she goes. This is really cool. There we go. And this Congreve clock, I, I just I simply oiled the pivots. I think she could use a good cleaning and service, but I oiled the pivots and I adjusted the escapement. And uh, we'll go over the escapement, what that looks like. But now it's running pretty good. I'm not sure the stainless steel ball, the half inch, is the right one, given the fact that everything's metric. Maybe it's something a little bigger, maybe a little heavier. I don't know, but I've gotten it to run like this. Uh, this clock is uh, just a, absolutely <laughs> fascinating to watch. I mean, who even cares what time it is? You know, it's these are not known for being accurate. It doesn't matter. Just watch. Look at this thing. Look at it go. Watch. There you go. Clunk. All right, let's look at the top here. Look at the movement. Wow, I mean, just look at that. You see wheel and everything. My goodness. Look at that. That's really cool. Here it goes. Let's watch the movement clunk. Yeah, and there's the escapement over here. We'll go over that in a minute. But this clock is running. Actually, it does seem to be keeping accurate time according to my wristwatch right now, so. That's a good sign. I suppose this thing must be an eight day movement. I don't really know. I'll let it run overnight. See what it does. Wow. The Congreve clock. Yeah, my understanding is these were kits uh, from the UK and uh, some uh, watchmaker or machinist enthusiast would you know, build it and buff it up and whatnot. And, Whoever built this one did a very nice job with it. And off it goes. And a friend of mine gave me this uh, who knew I was into clocks and watches and knew I'd appreciate it. So thank you very much. And it is running. My intention is to show my daughters and they're really into mechanical things and electronics and things like that. So hopefully uh, they'll find this interesting. Wow, very cool. Okay, now here is the uh, escapement going nice and smooth. So for this clock, I simply oiled the pivots and adjusted the escapement until I got it to run smoothly and had to figure out the mechanism. Uh, I'm not even sure what the right um, ball should be. I have a stainless steel. Uh, looks like a half inch ball in there. Everything on here is metric, so I don't know what the ball really should be. Uh, but man, there's a lot going on. So basically, if you look at this watch, so when the ball gets down to the end, this is so cool. It's going to hit that uh, lever and then it's going to fire this guy. Clunk. And what happens is there's a little, there's a pin there, and you can see it when the ball hits the lever, it's gonna hit the other lever. I'm gonna pop that pin off. And mine is, uh, there it goes. Mine's, um, again, I just oiled the, the pivot, so I'm sure if I cleaned it, it would have a lot more uh, umph on the escapement here, but seems to be working at least you want to set that you want to set the clearance on that pin as, as hair triggers you can get it 
That's what you want to do. You want to make this a hair trigger so the ball just has to touch these levers to click over. Another thing you want to adjust is this, um, this counterweight here. It's the counterweight to these lever arms. You kind of tweak that. I'm sure if I had a brass ball, I could put the counterweights out a little further, but if I had something a little dense, a little more dense. Um, so they're in, but it seems to work just fine. Another thing you want to look at is, this is the adjustment right up there. See that spring? Uh, and it, it holds the uh, height of this lever arm. Basically allows you to adjust the pitch of the table. And I'm sure that's also how you adjust the slow fast on the clock. But um, I've got adjusted for sort of an optimum torque that the, the movement is happy with pushing right now. So the most table pitch I can get to move the lighter ball and a torque that the movement is able to push. But now it's running pretty reliably given this. I mean, I'm not trying to <laughs> set a record timing here. Uh, I just want to make this thing function because I think it's cool and I want to show my daughters and make a video about it. Check this out. So mine, oops, there you go. Mine didn't have the right um, lever. So yeah, it's pretty ugly. Uh, I hacked out this little piece of thin brass. Uh, I initially started with this thicker one, but um, it was too heavy and the movement wouldn't, the escapement wouldn't function at all. So I just went to a piece of sheet brass and now that seems to be working just fine. Um, well, the fasteners, like I said, this is an M2, this is an M1.6 or something like that. It's a weird size. There it goes. Boop. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. The Congreve clock. And let's look at the top here as this thing runs. It's definitely one of the coolest clocks movements I've ever worked on before. Here we go. There she goes. Nice. Yeah, and this, uh, my understanding is this was a kit, and someone very ambitious clockmaker would, you know, build it and buff up, shine up all the parts. It's beautiful, actually. I mean, there's a little bit of uh, oxidation and stuff, but that can all be cleaned up. I mean, this, this clock is gorgeous. Okay. What I'm going to do is try to bring it around the front and, um, adjust it. Oh yeah, and, and and it's really important to make this level, otherwise the ball will not roll. So I had to put some shims underneath it. Uh, this thing's got to be level uh, every which way, so you got to get your bubble level out to make it run. Let's take a look 